coming up on building a fursuit from scratch. Tonight, we make a mess with some tape, give our dog a much needed haircut, and try on an unbelievably heavy pair of goggles. Hi, I'm Waffles, and in this episode of building a protogen from scratch, we finally finish our head. In the last episode, we went ahead and completed the wiring for electronics, leaving only the fur left. Tonight, the plan is to add all of the fur to the head, finish up the detail work, and go ahead and try it on. But before we get to the fur, there's one last thing that we need to do. To start things off, we're gonna go ahead and add a lycra liner to the inside of our head. Step one is to lay out our fabric, making sure to then fold it over on itself. Adding a liner is important for a couple of reasons. First, it'll make putting on the head a lot easier. The lycra is slick and smooth, while the upholstery foam has like a rough sandpaper texture. Second, it'll also help keep you cool. The lycra will wick away sweat from your body, helping to cool you off. Now, a trick you can use to make one yourself is to simply copy a balaclava if you own one. If you trace it out with a marker, you can get a fairly good pattern to use for yourself. Once we've copied everything out, we can go ahead and then pin both layers of our fabric together. Next, a trip to the sewing machine means that we can quickly knock this together, making sure not to sew the face shut. Finally, all we need to do is trim the excess fabric off with a pair of scissors. Now, I know it looks a little ugly, but it'll do exactly what we need to and all of our ugly seams will be hidden on the inside of the head. Now that we have our balaclava cut out, we can go ahead and glue it inside the head. This is surprisingly difficult, as the fabric is quite stretchy and it tends not to stick when you glue it down. Going slow and waiting for each section to dry is key. Going too fast and you run the risk of having to start over, or worse, spilling glue on your electronics. So now that we've gotten our balaclava glued in place, we've come across the first real problem, and that's our balaclava is round and our head is a triangle. If you notice, we have this gap in between the lycra liner we just um, sewed together and then the actual frame of the head. We're gonna have to create a piece that fits in this gap, gap and then glue it to the base and sew it to the liner. This has been way easier to do before gluing everything in, but too little too late. The next thing that we need to do is finish this piece here. As a general rule of thumb, you can make just about anything if you first cover it in tape. In order to fix this hole, we're gonna make a quick and dirty template that we can use to cut out a new piece of lycra. Using our tape template, we can go ahead and get a rough idea of what the piece is gonna look like that we're gonna need. The key is, whenever you make parts like this, is to only make a really accurate half that you can then flip over. That'll guarantee symmetry on the piece that you make. Once we've gone ahead and sewed that to our original headliner, we can go ahead and take the other end and hot glue it to the inside of the frame. The final results might look a little messy, but it's our little mess, so that makes it okay. In the end, this piece is purely functional and it'll all be covered up anyways. With the liner complete, we can go ahead and move on to the part that everyone is the most excited about, the fur. We are using the same trick as before. Cover everything in a big layer of tape and then just figure it out as we go along. Now comes to the fun part and that's creating the design for our ears. Off camera, I created a few different mock-ups and just ended up going with the one I liked the most. With stuff like this, I find it's best just to go with your gut. Once everything is marked out, we can go ahead and get a much better idea of what we're building. Satisfied that our pattern is correct, we can then use the same lines to cut apart our duct tape.
after all of that shaving and cutting, we ended up with 18 pieces of fur. Now, just like a Lego set, we can go ahead and put it back together. So now that we've gotten our pieces mostly sewed together, all we need to do is connect these two guys together and then we should have our finished ear. But before we do that, I wanna go ahead and just test fit everything. So I've mocked up what it should look like here and I think it's looking pretty good. There is one thing that we need to do first though and that's get this little piece here in place because this fur is gonna go over on top of it. So. The next step that we need to do is cut out some felt and then glue it to the inside of our ear before we can attach the fur for our ear. Adding the inner ear felt is one of my favorite steps in building a fursuit. It's the first real fabric adding to the head with the sole purpose of making us look good. Somewhere along the way, our pattern kind of got off a little bit because now that I've come to attach the fur, things are just a little bit too oversized. I think instead of just forcing this on, um, we're gonna go ahead and just freehand it and chop this piece of fur off, and then we can reattach it with hopefully much tighter tolerances. It's something that I think in the end will make the final product look a lot better. So let's go ahead, chop up some fur, and finish the furring for this ears. Oftentimes, a pattern isn't right the first time, and that's okay. Being flexible and willing to change as you go along will make the whole process a lot smoother. All these parts are hand sewed together using a blanket stitch. Sewing all these edges together feels relaxing and straightforward compared to the electrical work from before. It's a nice activity to put a podcast on and just grind out. So we've gone ahead and gotten these seams all sewed together and our ear is finally starting to come together and it's looking pretty good. Now there are two pieces that we need to add left and they're gonna go right here on the inside. One facing here and then another one at a right angle. And what that is, it's gonna be a piece with the fur on the inside pointed up. That should give us a pretty cool 3D fur effect and hide this little seam right here. Now with the ears done, we can go ahead and start the fur for the rest of the head and shoulders. We started with the ears because it's going to make things a lot easier to attach together once we get the fur done for the head. All of the wiring will eventually be hidden under the fur, so it's important to carefully mask it up. It would be all too easy to accidentally pull out a wire or cut something in half, and man, that would be a huge pain in the butt to fix. All of the taping I'm doing for the pattern is looking really scuffed. We ran out of duct tape and this masking tape just isn't working, so I think I'm gonna switch back to our incredibly sticky black tape and then just try to finish it off. If you've never used one of these mannequin heads before, they make making the neck and um, head way easier for the patterning. It's just, you have a base you can work off of and you can get basically all of these patterns for free. Now that we've gotten everything taped up, we can go ahead and draw the lines on for where we're gonna cut out our pattern pieces. I don't know if there's a trick to quite figure out where the lines are gonna go, but always remember, if you cut it out and it lays flat, you're good to attack, but if it curls, your fur is gonna make you hurl. So just remember that when cutting our fur out and you'll be good to go. So let's get the lines drawn on and all of our pattern pieces cut out. Here's a good example of what I was talking about before. See how this piece of tape stands up on its own? If you just try and use that to cut out your fur, you'll have a bad time putting it back together. Instead, just draw a line where it bends up and then cut it in half.
One of my favorite things about making fursuits is tetrising on all of the pattern pieces onto the fur. If you're really good at it, you can make a yard of fur last a long time. It's quite satisfying when you, can, when you can get it all to line up perfectly and turn like one last little piece into all the fur you need. I've been debating whether or not we're gonna do a bodysuit and the answer is still, I don't know. On one hand, I really do think protogens look a lot better with the bodysuit, so it'd be kind of lacking to build this really cool head on a cool bodysuit. But on the other hand, I kind of want to experiment with different video ideas. First Super Scratch is a really fun project and all, but I think there are ways we can do content similarly that it would end up being a lot better that isn't just me building a whole fursuit piece by piece. I don't know yet. I've been doing a lot of thinking about it, but until then, we're getting pretty darn close to finishing our little protogen head. Making our way down the head, we can start assembling the fur for the neck. A little fun fact about putting the neck together, if you sew it all together beforehand, you'll quickly find out that you're unable to get it back on the head. Instead, you first need to put everything on the head and then sew it shut. You can take a guess on how I figured that out. With all the fur for our neck sewed together, we can now start talking about locking everything down in place. Gluing the fur down is an intimidating process, but if you go slow and wait for each section to dry, it's actually surprisingly easy. One trick you can use is to make sure to pull your fur tight before applying the glue. This will help keep your fur from moving around while you glue it down, and it will make your fur end up looking a lot better once you get it all done. One of the only tricky parts was attaching the fur to the underside of the chin. You only have a small area to work with, and you run the risk of dripping hot glue onto your fur. Now, this won't outright ruin your fur, but it'll be a huge pain in the butt to clean up, and at this stage, we definitely don't want that happening. While we wait for our glue to properly dry, we can go ahead and knock out some of the smaller tasks remaining. First up, let's go ahead and attach the lycra liner we created at the beginning of the episode to the inside of the neck. Another thing I'm quickly doing is replacing all of the Velcro tabs with zip strips. This is just to make things a lot more permanent and then we're gonna go ahead and trim off all these tips here. And that should give us a much more permanent cable that isn't always getting tangled in on itself. The next thing that we're gonna tackle is adding felt trim to the edges of our fur. And what I mean by that is that there are several spots in our head where the fur meets plastic or the foam of the ears that we wanna hide that edge from the viewer seeing. To do this, we're very carefully cutting a long strip of felt that we'll carefully glue to hide that edge. It's just like getting to the end of a painting and then busting out the white highlighter pen. Little details like this really help make everything pop. Now that we have everything glued in place, we can go ahead and give our protogen a haircut. This last bit of cleaning and trimming is some of the most rewarding in the entire project. Trimming all the loose ends and cutting off the random tufts of fur helps show the clean lines and smooth edges of our protogen. One trick you can use while shaving the fur is to constantly be moving. Just like with sculpting, you always want to be getting a new perspective on what you're working with and avoid overworking any one area. So YouTube chat, we've made it to the end of another episode of building a fursuit from scratch, and I think it's a really important one. We've done it, we finally finished the protogen head, and I think it's turning out really good. Now, with all that being said, there's still one last thing that we need to do. We need to try on our protogen head, because I don't know about you, I'm quite excited to see how it is. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if there is a dignified way to put this on, but from my testing, I found it's almost easiest to put it on a table or better somewhere, and then just kind of shimmy or slide your head into it. The head itself is just a little bit tight, and that's probably from all of the foam and padding and stuff we added, but look, it fits surprisingly well. It's very snug. 
and my field of vision is like this. So actually a lot compared to most fursuits. It's surprisingly good visibility. So what do you think, YouTube chat? Has this pro gym been living up to your expectations? Because I think it looks really cool. I'm quite happy with how it's turning out. One of the coolest features I think we added is actually the magnetic visor. It makes it really easy to take this on and off, and whenever you get hot, you can just pop it right off. I'm quite happy with how well it works too. And to put it back on, it's just a simple, you just snap it right on. It's surprisingly easy. Now, the next thing I want to test out was the fans to see how well they'd cool the head down using our extra battery pack. Now, I don't know if you can hear me over all these fans, but a surprising amount of airflow is being moved through the three fans. The top ones, not so much, but they're definitely doing their job of getting rid of the hot air from the top of your head and pulling in fresh cold air from the bottom down here. Now YouTube chat, there's one last thing I'm gonna ask of you. Could you go ahead and like the video and check to see if you're subscribed? It's something that's free that you can do to help show your support for this channel, because trust me, building this protogen is a lot of work. Now, I can't wait to see you guys again soon. Next episode, we build the bodysuit.